The Red Sox and the Yankees just pulled off a trade. Those tend to end well for the Red Sox historically. You are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all the Major League Baseball. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I am an Emmy-nominated television producer who has been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade now, and I've finished five seasons, about to start my six, as a host here of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks so much for making us your first listen as we're trying to give you the best baseball fun all year long, and if you happen to be an everyday listener, then be sure to let us know. Put a hashtag Everyday Sully as you put us down on some of our social media, which includes Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or on Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter or whatever the hell it's called now. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And first and foremost, let's talk a little bit about our um, trivia question. I uh, had so much fun yesterday with Laura Saba of Locked On Canadians. Hopefully, some of the new Canadian listeners are here for us. The trivia question was, who is the all-time home run champion in Montreal Expos history? And a bunch of you got it right. Um, it, let's see who are some of the people who got it right. Uh, Dan Bourgeois got it right. John Murphy Jr. got it right. Uh, my buddy Marcel in Switzerland, you got it right. Uh, a bunch of you got it right. The correct answer is Vladimir Guerrero, the great Vlad Guerrero. By the way, Tim Wallach has the most hits in Montreal Expo history. A uh, little known fact there. A little known because I didn't know it, and I assume no one else did too. Hey, um, there was a trade that happened today. The Red Sox traded a troublesome uh, outfielder, Alex Verdugo. His final year before free agency has been sent packing to the New York Yankees for three young pitchers. Uh, and, and that's an interesting trade, to say the least. Uh, Verdugo is in his final year. hes I don't think there's any way he was going to come back for 2025. And they got three young pitchers for him. Uh, as a lifelong, you know, as a native New Englander, a lifelong Red Sox fan, I am more than happy with this trade. Um, but we're going to bring on a friend of the podcast, and the wonderful host of Locked On Yankees, Stacey Gotsoulias, who, by the way, watch Locked On Yankees because the latest episode, you get to see her reaction in real time of the Alex Verdugo trade because uh, it happened while they were recording their show. Um, we're going to talk about that for the bulk of today's show. We're going to go over our thoughts about that deal <clears throat> and everything else. A couple other things happened today. Uh, Marco Gonzalez, who was a acquired by the Braves from the Mariners. Gonzalez was pretty good, had a couple pretty good years with Seattle, has faded out, but is still a, you know, a, a major league pitcher. He he didn't, uh, you know, last year he was not a factor. He only pitched in 10 games, but he pitched 103 innings a year before, um, had uh, some all-star caliber seasons in Seattle. He's 32 years old, was sent packing in what was essentially a, Salary move from the Mariners sent packing to the Braves. Well, uh, I hope you bought your Marco Gonzalez Braves shirt pretty quickly because he's now a Pittsburgh Pirate. Uh, the Pirates sent him on cash consideration for a player to be named later to the Pirates. And Ethan Smith was on the Pirate uh, of Lockdown Pirates was on the show not too long ago. And we talked about the need for them to bring some major league pitchers into their rotation. Now, this isn't acquiring uh, either, uh, Greg Maddox in his prime, but, you know, Mitch Keller, and then you can have, uh, you know, Marco Gonzalez can be put in there, and Luis Ortiz could be put in there, Quinn Priestler can be put in there, Contreras could be put in there. You know, there's some other, you know, put in a couple of major leaguers and, you'll and you know, roll the dice, do the best you can. Um I think it's a, a completely uh, viable move for the Pirates. It's a very low risk, high reward move for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, Eric Fady, uh, that's how you pronounce his name, right? 
He's been away. Um, yeah, Eric Feedy is who pitched for the Washington Nationals between 2017 and 2022. Uh, was part of the World Series champion team. Didn't play in the postseason, but got a ring for his troubles. Um, he played the last uh, few years in Korea. And uh, um, actually, it's the last 2023 playing Korea and was dominant in Korea and pitched uh, 120 games, over 180 innings. And he signed a two year deal with the Chicago White Sox. So uh, I think that that's a, uh, you know, again, a, a low risk, very high reward move. Um, the Guardians won the draft lottery. It's difficult to tell what winning the draft lottery really means. It's not the NBA. It's not the NFL where the first pick of the draft is someone who's going to be part of the major league roster. But for the Guardians who won the division in 2022 and are probably going to make a trade with Bieber to get you know, some good young players, getting the number one overall pick could be a chance for them to draft a potential franchise player. Now look at the Cleveland Guardians seem to have no trouble developing pitchers. I'm not going to tell them who to draft. Maybe we could have Lindsey Crosby on from Lockdown uh, MLB Prospects to come on. But they should, I think, really consider getting the best offensive player available and maybe getting that potential superstar centerpiece of the team. How many times have Cleveland had teams that had really good pitching recently but didn't have the huge bat in the middle of that lineup to send them to the next level? Well, maybe this is the chance to get it. But then again, remember, Mike Trout was available, you know, very deep in the first round. So, look at you got to do your chances and you got to do your drafting. Well, look at uh, finally some stuff is happening here in the Nashville meetings. And don't think I'm not refreshing Twitter or whatever the hell it's called now to see if something other big happened. Uh, the Cubs, Jed Hoyer has said the Cubs are still in on Shohei Otani, who has met with Los Angeles and who has met with Toronto. I feel we'll find out something about him and Yamamoto pretty darn soon. Okay, we come back when we talk with the great Stacey Gatsoulias, and we'll be breaking down the trade that sent Alex Verdugo from Boston to the Bronx. And uh, it's all very, very interesting. Hey, look, there is Stacy Gotsoulias from Locked On Yankees. But hey, before we bring Stacy aboard, look at we love to escape and have this be a fun podcast environment, but we got to talk a little bit about something about preparing for real life. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade, and I'm telling you, that's scary. I can't imagine more helpless feeling if one of my sons got sick and a supply chain issue came and kept them from getting life-saving medications they need. Thankfully, we're going to be okay because of our Jace medical. Jace case. What's a Jace case? It's a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses. And trust me, this kind of stuff can happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medication will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code Locked On to get $20 off your next purchase. All right, as promised, my guest today... The person who brought me into the lockdown world and the host for, what, six, seven years now of Lockdown Yankees, the fantastic host of Lockdown Yankees, it's Stacy Gatsoulias. How are you doing, Stacy? Anything new today? You know, uh, I was complaining that the winter meetings were boring. I was mm -hmm. saying I was manifesting into the world, someone do something, and this is what I get. <laughs> I get Alex Verdugo. <laughs> You're a lifelong Yankee fan. I'm a lifelong Red Sox fan. Uh, these two teams don't trade that often. And no. just watch my appearances on HBO. Uh, when they do, it tends to be noteworthy. Um, I'm trying to think, like, there's some, like, innocuous Red Sox-Yankee trades. Like, 
you know, I guess when I can't, I mean, I'm having a hard time thinking of just sort of like little ones. I mean, I'm sure there've been a couple along the way. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, Don Baylor from Mike Eastler was a big one in 86. Uh, the Red Sox acquiring Mike Stanley and then the Yankees acquiring him right back. Um, yeah, I think there's a couple, of, but most of the times it's, uh, you know, Sparky Lyle or Babe Ruth. But, um, <laughs> oh, I just blew my, that was going to be my trivia question. Okay, well, I better come up with another trivia question <laughs> and fast. Okay, but, uh, all right, here's the deal. The Red Sox traded uh, Alex Verdugo. I am, as a lifelong Red Sox fan, I am thrilled. <laughs> because, as I said to you before, anything that makes me forget the Mookie Betts trade is fine. Any reminders of it can be wiped away. <laughs> and also, look, at they got, they got three young pitchers. Take your chances with them. And Verdugo has been... A lot of promise, and sometimes he's looked to be like not a all star, but as I said, like a a Mike Greenwell type, a left handed, good, solid player. But he constantly clashes with Cora, and he's not such a great talent that he's worth it. Um, I, I'm fine to turn the page, yeah. and also these trades don't take place in a vacuum. If this means the fellow who will not be named in the general manager office at Yankee Stadium. Thanks. Well, I got our left-handed bat. Everyone can relax now. <laughs> um, that's fine by me. Stacy. the floor is yours. Tell me your thoughts, and 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 we'll uh, Dealey Plaza this. Where were you, and what were you doing when you found out? Well, I was recording the Wednesday Locked on Yankees with my co-host Steve, and uh, if anyone watches tomorrow, you will actually see our reactions, because we were about three-fourths of the way through the show <laughs> when the alert came around, and our faces were pretty funny. So, um, yeah, I, I basically willed this into existence, not meaning to. So I wow. don't mind the move because I think Verdugo only has one year left on his deal. Right. And yeah. Um, I feel like, I don't feel like this is the only move the Yankees are going to make because I know that Cashman knows that if he thinks this is going to be the only outfield move that they make, people are going to show up to Yankee stadium with torches and pitchforks. Like I, they know, they know this can't be the only thing they do. So other people are thinking maybe they flip for Dugo. <laughs> like maybe he might not even be a Yankee for more than like a day, which is a possibility. Um, yeah. But I will say personally, I'm very upset about Richard Fitz merely because we had him on the show earlier this season. He's a sweet kid. He's a great pitcher. He won the Eastern League Pitcher of the Year um, for Somerset. And Somerset had a great pitching staff. So the fact that he was able to win that is pretty cool. Um, Greg Weiser, another good kid. Don't know much about Judice because he hasn't played yet, but he's right. another pitcher. Mm -hmm. um, but Weiser, you know, um, he can be good and he can be bad. It's mm -hmm. kind of funny watching him. Like he has some really good pitches where you're like, whoa, when you watch him. And then he has other pitches where you're like, Ugh. <laughs> in that kind of way where you're like, Ugh. like he could be really good or really bad. So he just needs to get his stuff together. But um, something else is going to happen. The Yankees can't keep giving away pitching like this because <laughs> who are they going to yeah, have? Yeah, I, I was kind of like, look it. it, it wasn't the, it, they didn't trade away, you know, freaking Garrett Cole, but Right, I, I, but at the same time, I, I didn't think the Yankees were really in a position to um, trade away a lot of pitching depth. Right, because they already did you know, that in twenty twenty two, and you know that they were snake bitten by that. So it's, yeah. it that surprised me. That's why I feel like something else is going to happen. I know they're in on Yamamoto, so. I mean, obviously, this can't be the only thing they do. It's just right now. You know, yeah. this is what we get to evaluate. But yeah, I mean, the Red Sox got two pretty good pitchers that I know of because I've uh, seen mm -hmm. Weissert in action and um, have heard about Fitz's performances. I don't really watch minor league baseball, but I've heard about them. And again, very sweet kid. We had him on the show. He likes Star Wars. And <laughs> he's, from, he's from Helena, Alabama, and he's just a good kid. And um I can't remember his pitching arsenal. I think the fastball is pretty good. And him and Will Warren were having like a contest between them. 
yeah. this past season. So, yeah, I just don't know how to feel about the whole Verdugo thing because, truth be told, finally got rid of Aroldis Chapman, finally got rid of Domingo Herman, don't yeah. have Josh Donaldson anymore. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I think I could root for everyone on the Yankees now. We don't have any guys that I have to be kind of like, Ugh, about. And then they trade for Alex Verdugo. And it's just like, I had, what, five minutes of peace? Come on. <laughs> um, you know, look at, I have no idea how he's going to be in New York. I mean, he was, he showed flashes. I mean, there was a, he had a very good first half last year to the point where I thought he should have been the Red Sox all-star representative, you know, truth be told. Yeah. Um, it turned out to be uh, Kenley Jansen, Red Sox legend, Kenley Jansen. <laughs> um, yeah, by the way, all that's left from Mookie Betts is now Connor Wong. Um, so I feel, I feel great about that, but he's, uh, uh, yeah, he, he's signed through he, – his earliest free agency is is the end of this year. So, it's you know, mm-hmm. it's a one-year – you know, it's obviously not a long-term deal. You know, he is a le- he has left-handed power um, and sometimes has shown it. Um, and then sometimes he has been a complete absent-minded professor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, was, it was very frustrating to watch him play because – and no, you can't use the whole he's just up from the minor leagues. He's played seven years in the major leagues at this point. Do you think you know, a change was, of scenery scenery would help? Uh to not to New York. <laughs> it changes scenery to Detroit. Yeah. It changes scenery to Kansas City or Mo- or or even a contender like Milwaukee, you yeah. know, where it's a little where the, the stakes are not as high. Well, no, you but know? I mean like with the guys that New York has like maybe someone like an Aaron judge or someone like an Anthony Rizzo or even a Giancarlo Stanton can kind of like settle him down. Cause I mean, yeah, think, maybe? I, maybe I, I mean, look at, I'm not saying this to be mean cause I I'm, I'm known to be mean, but you know, I don't think that the, the judges and the Giancarlo Stantons have that same aura of, you know, you know, you're going to be playing alongside Jeter. You're going to be playing alongside, you know, the, the, the people who have, you know, been there, done that. And oh, no, I don't mean stuff. like that. I mean, okay. like, they're. Well, it's Judge's know. team. Yes. It's, yeah. yeah. And, like, maybe and, they can straighten his ass out because they are a lot bigger than him, right? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, but, I mean, he was, it's funny, like, 2021 seems like a very, very long time ago when the Red Sox got to within two wins of the World Series. Mm-hmm. You know, and they, I actually like the direction they went in last year. I know it sounds strange, but you know, I took one. You take one look at the team, and Casas had a good young. Yeah, you know, was Casas did well. Yoshida fit perfectly into the team. You know, Duran played well. Um, you know, you saw that you saw uh, Bello pitched well out of the out of the rotation. You know, you saw there was you know Crawford had his moments. You saw they're like okay. There were some young players that you can maybe start to piece the stuff around and maybe getting this guy out of here was also a step in the right direction. You, you, there's always a, a, a surplus of outfielders. You know, there's giant piles of outfielders every year you know, at free agency. And so um, um, there's, there's uh, nothing about having – to replace Verdugo that I feel like, how are they going to do that? There'll right. be someone available. Yeah. You know, they'll be able, they'll be able to, to, um, you know, Frankenstein something together there. So yeah. I actually think getting him out is again, I'm, I'm elated, you know, because any, I, I also believe in trading for uh quantity as much as quality. One of the things when the Astros and the Cubs did their big teardowns and rebuilds, is when they traded, they made sure they got two or three players back. They just fill your farm system with as many people. You don't know that person may not be the person who clicks, but maybe as a teammate with this person, you don't know how it'll work. Just fill your farm system up with young players and take your chances. Right. And I'm all for that right now. The Red Sox are not winning piddly poo in 2024, but I want them to get younger and I want them to get better and I want them to get less dumb. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think we all want that from our teams. <laughs> I want that in life, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah younger and less dumb. Yeah. Um, I am not allowed to mention the name of the general manager of the New York Yankees baseball team. 
<laughs> um, but you know that team is flush with cash, man. Yeah, and, we, uh, uh, we no, we we broke that rule for Wednesday show. We had to. Okay, cool. I didn't. I didn't want to. Yeah. I didn't want to Voldemort this. Yeah, in, but, yes, um, in case. Okay, so if you don't watch Locked On Yankees, we and you should. We joked around because of Cashman's, you know, ridiculousness at the GM meetings that we were going to stop talking about him. And if we had to talk about him, we would basically treat him like Voldemort and not mention his name. But we had to on Wednesday's show. So, <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I didn't want to be the one to break that. I didn't yes. want to be the one to break that. Yeah. Um, this is, I took one look at this. The worst case scenario is him saying, see, I can bring right. that left headed bat in. Yeah. You know, I don't need to bring in Freddie Freeman. I don't need to bring in Olsen. I don't need to bring in Bryce Harper, Harper, Harper or Shohei <laughs> Otani. I got, yeah, Alex Verdugo. Yeah. You're welcome. In yeah. fact, they're editing his Yankeeography as we speak. Um, <laughs> uh, you take a look at what the Braves are doing, and they're acquiring everything that isn't nailed down right now, yeah. and you get the sense they're about to do something bigger. Like, I think this is kind of like – they're they're acquiring this piece from this, and they're already saying Gon Marco Gonzalez, who they acquired from Seattle, may already be on the move. I mean, they're they're already, you know, the the trade for the right to uh, um, uh, Kansas City has already that that player has already been traded off. They're 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 Rubik's cubing something together here. Do you get the sense that's happening in the Bronx, or is this uh, it? To paraphrase Kenny Logan, I don't know because they keep. You know, they keep mentioning how they're not out on Soto yet. This doesn't mean they're out on Soto at all. So, you know, Cashman said at the GM meetings, they need two outfielders. Mm -hmm. He said it, two. And I don't think he means one free agent or someone traded and one of the kids. I think he means they need to go out and get two legit outfielders. Um, there's one more day of the winter meetings. And, you know, of course, there's the rest of the off season because <laughs> not everything has to happen in the winter meetings. That's true. Um, I don't like I said earlier, he knows that the fans will show up pissy if he doesn't do more than that, especially with all the talk about Soto. They're not going to accept. Oh, well, we got Alex Verdugo. No. <laughs> Could Verdugo be a chip for Soto? I was thinking that. Yeah, that could be a possibility. He could be flipped. You know, he might not even have to worry about shaving. <laughs> he might only be a Yankee for like 24 hours, 18 hours. We might be waking up in the morning and finding out, hey, the Juan Soto deal was done and Verdugo is in the middle of it. So you never know. I don't think this, I don't, well, the Yankees are definitely not done. They need so much. So, yeah. Um, what, and with that yeah. in mind, they traded away three young pitchers to bring in, a potential flippable chip. Yeah. Um, and a guy who has a one year deal and who is, I mean, he's okay. Yeah, I mean, he's it's fine. not, he's not a bad player. <laughs> right. He's okay. And okay is better than bad. Right. And they've had, and their lineup was so bad last year. I mean, it was, I'm not, I'm not telling tales out of school. It was their no. offense more than their pitching. That was their issue last oh, year. Yeah. I mean, Garrett Cole <clears throat> would have had at least 22 wins if it weren't for the offense. There were a few games where he got screwed by the offense, not being able to score more than one run. I so. mean, and, and <laughs> um, I mean, let's face it. Stanton was a black hole last year. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. he was, I mean, you didn't get to use your picture of Stanton for his home runs as often as you normally would. What was it? Only 22 times? Awful. Only 22 times. <laughs> yeah. And believe me, I see it every time it goes yeah. thumbs up there. Yeah. But no, I um, that up by 40 again, man. <laughs> and of course, well, Judge was hurt, but you know what? I mean, there, I saw years where. Judge you know, was hurt. Rizzo was hurt. Rizzo, yeah. I feel like, and I said this on the show, Rizzo felt like the bigger injury because for the first two months before he ran into or before Fernando Tatis ran into Rizzo's neck, he was yeah. one of the best hitters in baseball. He was the best hitter on the Yankee. He was hitting over yeah. 300. He was spraying the ball to all fields. Like, you know, the whole getting rid of the shift thing was really helping Anthony Rizzo and not having him or having him playing as badly as he was. Cause he went from one of being one of the best pit, uh, hitters in baseball was, yeah. to literally being one of the worst. But it's because injured. of the concussion that they didn't they didn't treat right. 
Yeah, and the concussion that he didn't really tell them that he wasn't feeling, like he didn't really offer a lot of information either. It was on both sides. It was just a, a cluster F of epic proportions. Yeah. Um, DJ LeMayhew yeah. didn't know what he was doing in the first half, and then all of a sudden Sean Casey works with him, and he starts hitting again. And then it's like, oh, you can hit. Great. So there was a lot of stuff happening there, yeah. but the... I see what the bottom five slots of the lineup was a black yeah. hole. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, Verdugo is, is Verdugo is an improvement on that. You know, sure. I mean, this is coming from a guy who's applauding and seeing him go. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, that's that is, definitely an improvement. That's yeah, a, definitely a step up. And I, I preach that all the time yeah. that, you know, mediocre is better than bad, you know, and, and that's what I call, you know, the Eddie Rosario, Jorge Soler syndrome. When the, you know, the Braves lost their entire outfield, they, put major leaguers in there and roll the dice and wind up winning a world series for their troubles. Yeah. But I just feel that there's, I don't know. I, I've, I've been, I've been feeling the Yankees have to do something a little ma more major than that. I mean, they, they've had like, I don't know if you've ever been to those sushi places where they have the boats going by you and you pick the plates up as they've ever seen those. I've seen them. I don't uh, eat, fish but I've okay seen well those. i love sushi yeah. and, the, and then they float past and i've just imagined the, those little boats and there's bryce harper and they let it float by and there's manny machado and they let it float by and Corey seager <laughs> you know Carlos correa i mean you can name seager by the way seager was the one when he went to free agency i know i'm preaching to the choir here but i would have bet my son that he was <laughs> going to the yankees he, everything like when when they were like when they were saying, should they sign Machado, Correa? I said, Seager. I said, it's perfect. He's mm -hmm. got the left-handed swing. He's a good shortstop. And he's a winner. I mean, I, I'm in Los Angeles. I saw close up how, you know, how great he was in the <laughs> in the series, in uh, the COVID series, and in the LCS against Atlanta. He was just, I'm like, I'm saying, this guy is, is going to come to New York. It's going to be, I, you you may reach through your your webcam and strangle me when I say this, but I said this is going to be as good a fit of a player they they acquired as a champion from another team as Paul O'Neill. I said this is going to be Paul O'Neill 2.0. Mm -hmm. That he's going to come to New York and it's going to be perfect. And and I was going to hate it. <laughs> and then he signs with Texas and he has joined who as the only person to win a World Series MVP with two different teams. Uh, Reggie Jackson. Right. Yeah. And, you know, when he hit that home run to tie the game in game one, I just remember thinking that, that that's, you know, they needed that in the series against Houston the year before. Right. Instead of IKF for the 14th caller in WFAN. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think one of your subtexters played shortstops a couple of games this year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 It certainly felt that way. So they have to do. So, I mean, look at they. Uh, they have to do something. They have to. Well, do Well, Volpe's Volpe's fine at shortstop. Yeah, um, he's fine. No, but they, he'll he'll get he'll get better. No, but they have get to better. get. They have to make they they have to make a splash bigger than Verdugo. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 So who do you but, think it's going to be? It's not going to be Otani. No. Um, and I you, don't know if it's going to be Soto. I really want. I really want a mystery team to come out of nowhere and, and scoop in and get Otani. I think that'd be the funniest thing ever. Oh, by the way, can I just, can I be a uh, Cassandra here and make a warning that no one will listen to? Mm -hmm. um, stay away from Bellinger. To <laughs> me, it, to me, if there's any free agent that screams of regression, uh, regression, <laughs> it's going to be yeah. Bellinger. Yeah. I mean, he just took the, I, I, I look at, I like Bellinger. And I know he's got the Yankee connection too because of his dad. Yeah. Um, and he was he was a very easy guy to root for when he was in LA. I get it. His peak was very high. Uh, that was a fluke peak. And I think someone's gonna pay him like he's a superstar, and I don't think he's a superstar anymore. And that's gonna be one of those deals in five years when they do the worst contracts in baseball. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm gonna go to FanDuel and put my money down that that's gonna be on the, one of those articles there. So Oh, uh, well, look at, um, uh, I just, uh, I, I don't think they're going to acquire Soto. Here's what I think is going to happen. I, 
here's where my Soto, my 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 Otani prediction is the Dodgers. I think that that's just going to happen. You don't think Blue Jays? No, I don't. Hmm. No, I don't. I there's a there's there's a strong case for them, but I think he likes LA. Yeah, I think um, he likes that area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there and there's a huge Japanese population in Los Angeles and all this other stuff. Um, I think the Mariners are going to. I think the Mariners are making some moves, clearing some room mm. to bring in Soto. Hmm. I think that's. I think. I, I think Seattle's my prediction for Soto. And I That'd think. That, I think this move of of the all these players who a couple of years ago were the the big future hope for the team, like Gonzalez and Kelnick and all that. Were I think that they've they're clearing this. I think they're clearing the decks. I think they're clearing. I think they were really mad they didn't capitalize. They went to the postseason in 2022 for the first time since Ichiro's rookie year, and um, I think they were they're really disappointed that they missed. Now the that was when they won 116 games, and the Yankees knocked them out of the ALCS, right? In five games. Hold on, I let think, me. Uh, I, let think me look, let I think that's what it was. I think that's. Yeah, hold on. I think that's and, what it was. Uh, yeah, and Soriano hit the home run, and that, that 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 yes. I was at that game when Soriano hit the home run in Game Four. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, Stacey, I don't know if you're aware of this because they we've been keeping this kind of on the on the, the down low. <clears throat> but Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts on Locked On plus national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. Did you know that? I caught myself on it one morning. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is interesting when you, when, when you like, like the, the sushi boats, when, when your face is the one on the conveyor belt, like, like it, you know, Oh, it's not locked. No, on. Wasn't the, a, yeah. It's not locked on bucks. What's happening here? <laughs> locked on Minnesota wild, but, um, <laughs> And by the way, I want to just thank the uh, Lord for uh, locked on um, uh, Canadians for joining the show yesterday. We got a lot of positive. Uh, 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 Laura Saiba from uh, Locked On Canadians was on the show. We got a lot of positive uh, responses, and uh, some of you may note my uh, where is it right there? There's my Expo's pennant up there. Viva les Expo! Viva les Expo! <laughs> Uh, I want ex- the Expos to come back. Stacy Gatsoulias is the host of Locked on Yankees, which I never miss. I never miss an episode. Um, and you don't want to miss tomorrow's episode because she gets to react in real time to the Verdugo trade. Um, tell people where they can listen to your show. You can listen to us on every podcasting platform available. There are new ones being formed every day, apparently. And yeah. you can watch my stupid face on YouTube because I do make so many dumb faces because i don't have a poker face so you'll no. see how i reacted to the Virginia you do movie. not it's I one of the reasons i love watching it because first of all you have your your eyebrow game is uh is second to none i uh, like but to yeah. rock sometimes with that eyebrow i can't i have yeah. the i have the people's eyebrow i don't know can you do that yeah <laughs> oh, by the way this door trivia question here this might be a little easy one but i i i realized that our discussion um I uh, I spoiled the trivia question by saying something, which was the my trivia question I had planned, which was, who are the only two Yankees to win the Cy Young Award who began their career with the Red Sox? Well, maybe you don't. Maybe I didn't mention that. No. Oh, do you what? That's there it is. Because I had and the, and, and the, the bonus trivia oh, question uh, is Clemens and. Oof. Uh... Mm, let me thank God. Um, <clears throat> wait. <laughs> when did the Cy Young start? <laughs> uh, in the mid in the mid fifties. Okay. Who started with the? I don't know. I don't know who the second one would be. Sparky Lyle. Oh, you said that earlier. Yes, I did. You said his name earlier. Okay, okay. so. All right. Don't say anything, Stacey Gatsoulias. So you probably know the answer to this. Okay. Who is the only person to win a postseason MVP for the Red Sox? 
who began his major league career with the Yankees? That's your trivia question. Who was the only, and don't answer if you know it, Stacy. this is for the listeners. Who was the only Red Sox postseason MVP who began his major league career, made his major league debut as a New York Yankee? So write your answers on the bottom here at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or on Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Welcoming back. Stacy Gotsoulias, it took a Red Sox Yankee trade to pull it off, but we managed to do it. This is a locked on MLB, locked on Yankees crossover. She's Stacy Gotsoulias. My name is Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. All right, I'm going to turn it off here. 